Hello, Parallel Church. Thank you guys so much for joining in with us for part three and the final part of mm-hmm. our series, Relation Slips, uh, which has been just incredible so far, yep. uh, especially for everyone. Yeah, it's been so awesome. <laughs> Today, actually, across the board, we have all of our site pastors preaching, which is yep. so fun. So be praying for, for them. Yeah. Um, we get to have Pastor Ralph here on the online and in the mm-hmm. house this morning. So be cheering for him. Definitely shout him down in the chats with the comments and all the emojis. <laughs> yes, you're going to yep. probably be using a lot of laughing face emojis. Pastor Ralph is one of the funniest people. It's true. He has that we know. He has a very good sense of humor. (laughs) So you guys are in for a treat today. It's so exciting. I think he said that this is the first time he's preached in two years. It's it's been a while, so it's it's very, very exciting. Yeah, it's exciting. We love having Pastor Ralph in. And if you are joining us for the first time today, guys, we would love to connect with you. We have host team members waiting in the chat that would just love to say hello and get some information from you. We can see the chat Yeah, we got uh, (laughs) Jennifer in there. We got uh, Jalissa, I think I saw. uh, And it is scrolled past, Mm -hmm. so we can't see anybody else. Anthony, for sure. Anthony's <laughs> probably in there. Craig, I hope. Like, let us know where you're watching from, guys. We love to see people yeah. watching from all around the world. We know that uh, you guys have friends and family. There's hope. There you are. <laughs> How's I it hope. going, guys? <laughs> so exciting. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about midweek activities. Yeah, so uh, here at Parallel <laughs> Online in the campus, we don't just run church strictly on Sundays. It goes throughout the week. Uh, so on Mondays, we have our live Q&As, which should be mm-hmm. this Monday, yep. um, uh, I think. I think we'll run this <laughs> Monday, uh, but we- definitely check that out for, mm-hmm. yeah, it's going to be a, just a Q&A on our Relation Slips series here. Uh, Tuesdays are always prayer nights. Yes. Uh, I run those. Um, I think they're good. They're great. They're, they're pretty awesome. Also, though, we cannot forget one of the most important midweek activities, Uh-oh. Wordle. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who's playing Wordle? Let us know. Um, Don't this spoil the word really today. This was really hard. Okay, I didn't even do the one today yet. So. Yeah, I haven't either. So if you I spoil it, I'm going to be mad. But who got tripped up by Divid? That one was horrible. What the heck even is that word? <laughs> divid? Like a dividend? Divid? Yes. And no, that's not yes, a word. Yes, it is a word. They lied. <laughs> it's a word. Did you get it? Divid. No, I don't even think I did it yesterday. <laughs> well, that, wasn't even, that wasn't yesterday, I don't think. That was the one before. Ah, it was horrible. It that's probably almost why. Almost got me. Anyway, let us know what has been the hardest word of word that you have yeah. done. This week was particularly challenging, I think. Yeah, they're getting harder. They are. Anyway, I guess back to midweek things. Wednesdays, yeah. we got our house parties. <laughs> you can talk about Wordle. It's pretty fun. Yeah, you can talk about Wordle at house parties. But if you join <laughs> on Wednesday nights, we have our house party, which uh, is just an online connect group where you can just kind of hang out, uh, just have some fun, yeah. uh, ask some weird questions. Good to go. It's true. And uh, Thursday nights is our Build the Team night. Yeah. So Tim usually teaches that one. And yeah, it's a, just a time just, to get together with the online community and grow and develop yourself as a leader or wherever yep. you're at. So it doesn't matter if you're serving or not. We encourage you to come on out and join the team. Definitely. It's lots of fun. Yeah. And uh, coming up here real soon is the one year anniversary of our online campus. That is campus, true. Uh, yeah. Which is going to be on <laughs> Easter. I've Me never and sure. are going to eat cake. That's what's gonna happen. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna eat like cake. we're gonna sit here and eat cake. Not like uh, maybe have streamers. Yeah. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Balloons. Yes. Yep. It's gonna be a party. It so is. Yeah. So stay tuned. Get prepared for that. <laughs> um, guys, this is the point uh, during online experience that we would love for you to share this. So let somebody know that this they can join today. Press share. Send it in a text message. Post it on your Facebook page. Just let them know and get it yep. out there. Um, yeah, it's going to be a good one today. Absolutely. And we're about to just get into the worship here. So uh, get comfortable and uh, yeah, let's get into it.
Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Parallel Church. We are so excited you're here for part three. Part three of Relations Lips. Pastor Ralph will be preaching this morning, so that's kind of exciting. Woohoo! If you are new here, please go out to the lobby. We have a stand out there. You can't miss it. We have a gift for you. Just say thank you for joining us. We're so thrilled to have you here. If you have children, right through this door here to my right, we have Parallel Kids, fun, safe. The kids are absolutely going to love it. If you all want to stand with me, we're going to start our worship. The words are on the screen. Enjoy.
Jesus walk beside me. The winter storms make way for spring. In every season, from where
there's a, there's a story in the Bible you've heard of Jesus and Lazarus. And, and I'm often reminded of that because sometimes we face things and we think oh, it's, it's just it's too late. It's too, we can't bear this grief or this situation we're facing. I mean, that's the ultimate loss, right? The loss of somebody. But for Jesus. Because even the song before says the only empty grave is our promise, right? That's, the, that's our promise. When things are so far gone, there's still hope in his name. One name, Jesus. So when we pray about these prayer requests today, let's remember that. It's not about us and how crafty our words are, or even in prayer. It's about the simplicity of calling on his name. Because you know what, who Lazarus listened to was Jesus. And he's the one that's going to intervene on our behalf today when we pray for these situations that people are facing. And some are very, very serious. And even if you don't think it's serious, it's serious to the individual going through it. They need that peace for that situation, and they're asking him. So there's nothing too big and nothing too small is what I'm trying to say here today. So let's go through a few of these. Uh, please pray for Lana, who's in need of a kidney transplant and only has 13% function. Lance, sorry, Lance, 13% function in his kidneys. Our mother Evelyn is, is being called to God. She served as a, as a reverend in Saskatchewan and Alberta for 30 years. Dementia has taken her over the last 10 years. She has stopped eating and is fading. We're asking God for a comfortable chair in his kingdom. We pray for her to find peace. We spoke with her just yesterday and she said she's ready to go home. That's the hope. Even in that situation, she's got the hope. And we'll pray for the, check his, check his family about that situation. Uh, please pray for the situation in Ukraine. I mean, there's so many things going on in this world of unsettled. But no matter how unsettled things are, his name is still above that situation, we know as well. And there's many, many Christians praying for that situation. And we're going to pray today. Uh, Lonnie had a, ski, a bad ski accident over the weekend, has both ACLs and fractured part of her leg. Specialists are still determining the best rate for treatment, looking like a wheelchair temporarily, and surgery followed by lots of physio. Please pray for both her physical health and the family to adjust to this lack of mobility. And here's, here's a terrible situation, but please pray for the Vanderbeek family this morning. Uh, their, their beautiful 18-year-old daughter was in a fatal accident, leaving behind her parents and three siblings. Please also pray for the McLeod family, more specifically Riley, as Bethany was Riley's very serious girlfriend. Please pray for peace and comfort for everyone. Uh, these, both of these families were related and connected to our church in many ways. So the unimaginable things, but for the name of Jesus, to bring peace to that. So let's pray today, guys. Let's all pray together. God, we lift up the Vanderbeek family and the McLeod family, Lord and all those involved that are related, Father, in that terrible situation, God. We thank you, God, that there is an empty grave, God, regardless of the loss we experience, God. We pray for your peace upon that situation with those families, God, that your love would just, just engulf them, God, in this very, very difficult situation. And Lord, for the, the people that are waiting for a kidney, Lord, and, and for the health issues, Lord, and, and for those that, are, that have had accidents with, with their limbs and, and other parts of their bodies, Father, we just pray, God, that your healing power, God, would just flow through them, God, and bring correction in every part. And the, the grandmother, God, that's waiting to meet you, Lord, we thank you that you welcome her with open arms, God, and we can rely on that wonderful reunion as well, Father. And God, the situation in Ukraine, Lord, this world, God. God, we lift it up to you, God. We thank you that you bring us a peace, that our focus would be on you, God, because your name is the one that can bring change, God. You brought it to Lazarus, God, and you can bring it to every one of these situations here, Father. And God, we thank you for that. We thank you in your powerful name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for moving on our hearts today, God, and, and those facing these in, in unimaginable things. Father, I just pray that your peace in the coming days and hours and weeks ahead, Father, that God, you just, they would just sense your presence, God. And that God, you would just speak to their hearts today, God. And God, speak to us today as we go into a series, Father, and we're in this series about relationships, God, and, and, and our relationship with you is so reflective in our relationship for others, God. You said love God and love others, God. So today, I just pray, God, that you would just speak to our hearts of areas that we need to change for us as individuals, God, that we would be more like your love than what this broken world is. And God, we give you all the glory for today with thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. Well, welcome to Parallel Church. Uh, trust that you feel God's love coming in here today, and that's kind of what we do. We embrace grit and grace, no matter how messy things get. And things get pretty messy in the world, you know. But that's when we can call on a name like Jesus. That's that's our hope. It's not in us and what we do. We we do all we can with with helping and educate and direct and read God's word and study and increase in wisdom and knowledge, but that's what we can do. But what he can do is so much beyond us. And if you're brand new to this and you haven't, you haven't got a concept of that, that's okay. We trust that through what I get to share today and what you get to experience that you're going to see a glimpse of who he is and not focus on us. Because that's what we do every week. We do that in our song. In our connection and our serving, it's all about who Jesus is. It's not about an awesome building and great music. It's about him. Because he's the one that can bring true change. We can do all we want. But without him, it's futile. It doesn't matter. But um, I want to welcome you guys online. I don't know if I can do this this time. This has been two years since I've been up here doing this part. And I just do like three lines and then I'm done. But I'll, I'll welcome you guys later. So just chill out, you guys online. Tim and Jen are pros at that, but I'm gonna ask you guys to take a seat. We got a special song for you guys to enjoy today before I come.
Wow. Just so you know, that wasn't a Christian song. <laughs> Not apologizing for that. It's, it just creates a tension. Don't you just see that in relationships at times? Oh, anyways, I want to welcome you guys watching online. Look at all those guys. Anna, Jennifer, this is where we get to do the romper room thing. <laughs> they never called my name, Teacher Betty. Never even, I didn't think I even existed. And I watched TV. Your kids don't remember that. But Larry and Lori and Brooklyn and Matt and Greg and Ram and Betty and Rise and Chase and Tess, if I don't say one person's name, we're going to get cards. So Jonathan, Shannon, <laughs> Boodleistic, <laughs> Boodleistic, that's okay. Anthony, Ryan, Brian, Christy, Cher, Hope, and George. Man, the faithful people watching online. You guys can connect with the host and team there. It's so cool to have you guys watching because, man, we've reached so many people. And through the pandemic, I, again, I haven't been up here. It's been two years of, not I mean, not just Pastor Kelly. He's an amazing, amazing presenter. But uh, we had other roles to take on during that time and during that season. So I'm excited to be able to share with you guys today. Uh, if I'm a little rusty, you guys give me some grace on that. And cards and letters can keep them coming. You've got a connect card in there. It's whatever you want to say. Nothing I haven't heard before. But uh, as you guys know, I don't know, we were away last weekend. 40 years for Cindy and I. <laughs> give, give it up for Cindy, man. <laughs> You're going to hear why, you know, when after I'm done sharing. But now one thing we do, every time, like we, we habitually get away, you know, get away. And we always say, okay, we're going to work on something. You know, we're just not just going to go and relax and eat and, you know, hang out. We're going we're gonna to work on something. So we, we sat down one night and we were like, okay, you know, you give me two things I need to change. And, and I'll give you two things that you need to change. And Cindy goes, okay, you, you just, you never listen. I need you to pay more attention. And uh, I, I can't remember what the second thing is. <laughs> so we're doing good after 40 years. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? And if you've been married a long time, you know, it's, it's a process of, of growing together in intimacy, you know, coming together. Another thing people ask us, not all the time, but they ask us, hey, you guys are 40 years old. Like, how often, you know, like? This was supposed to be the sex talk. So if there's kids in here, it's not the sex talk. But they often ask you that. Well, how, you know, how often, man? You guys have been married 40 years. And I, I just said almost every day for 40 years. <laughs> yeah, they, had, they usually give me the same reaction. <laughs> like almost on Monday, almost on Tuesday, <laughs> almost on Wednesday, <laughs> almost every day. <laughs> so that's none of your business, right? But that's, that's often we look towards as, as intimacy as, as that. But that's just that's a part of a healthy relationship of two married people. Uh, <laughs> so don't take that advice, guys. <laughs> hey, Pastor Al said almost every day. Because you're going to find out that probably isn't the truth. <laughs> but according to the Winnipeg divorce, child custody, family, lawyer, a second leading cause of divorce in Canada is cheating. And here's what they said. Unfortunately, it's an ongoing trend in today's world with the help of te technology, and it's more than easy to pick up on and date anyone. All thanks to the digital world, cheating is something that you should not even do with their enemies, let alone love one, the, the one love of your life, or once used to be. Once used to be is an interesting statement. Because anybody can, can, can slip into a ditch one way or another. I mean, our 40 years, we've been in both ditches at times. Right? It, it doesn't mean that that's the end. It's just like, is there a guardrail there to, to kind of protect you, to guide you, you know, so that you don't almost go off the road? Right, and, that's, and usually those are very hurtful times, but in those times there's very kairos moments of importance for people. And this isn't a, a shame peop, on people who get a divorce or have been divorced. This has got nothing to do with it because stuff happens and you're the ones that's responsible for your choices, right? And, and you get the benefit or the hurt, and, and so you're owning that kind of thing. But it can be such a challenge. No one enters a marriage planning on cheating on the one love they love most. So why does it happen? And frequently enough to be the second leading cause of divorce. It doesn't happen all of a sudden. You know, typically it doesn't. The, the symptoms of that aren't always evident in a relationship. But for as long as there have been relationships, there's been cheating. Let me explain. What is cheating? Like, what is it? Is it, is it watching inappropriate things? You know, because that's not very intimate with the person that you're with. Is it flirting with a coworker, or maybe talking about conversations that, that maybe you shouldn't have with the opposite sex because it's, it's an intimate area? And I know when Cindy and I do counseling, like I don't counsel women 
alone on situations where I'm going to be in an environment where there's things that I don't need to hear alone. You know, that's between her and her husband or, or maybe another, another person representing like a woman in the room to go, okay, that's just, it's, it's just not safe. It's one of those things that you just want to stay back because you could almost go into an area where you're going to be healing or bringing change in that person's life. And it's not for you to bring. It's either for God or their husband. But as a team of counselors, we often talk about subjects that are, that are very sensitive. But we, we make sure we don't do it alone. That's the first word of wisdom I'd say is don't be talking to somebody about something that you could almost get into a situation that you're not going to be thankful for. When does a close relationship with a friend cross that border? What are, what are those guidelines? You know, that's, that's for you to talk about and discuss with, with your spouse or with your future spouse or, or with that friend that you're dating. Maybe it's the time you say, look, we're not that serious, but I'm not comfortable with this subject or that. And, and you set those boundaries to the point where you can trust with that intimate area of your life because you're saying that's the one. That's the person. Why even talk about it? You're only putting yourself. And if, if you... <laughs> You know, back in my day, it was like, you didn't, you just, you know, it was, it was after the 70s, like we were early 80s. We know what that meant back then. It was just, there was no value put on that level of intimacy. But then people pay the repercussions later on. What if it's an open relationship? Man, I've met people. Honestly, I've met people. We, we get involved in people's lives no matter how messy. I've met people in open relationships. You think, well, that's got to be, <laughs> like, where's the guardrail? It's like way over there. There's still problems with cheating. You're not protected by how wide or how far apart your situations are. There was a lot of opinion when a former vice president had stated publicly that, that he, he wouldn't have dinner alone with a woman unless it was his wife. You know, as imagining if, you know, they, they put him down saying, well, what do you think women are temptresses? And, you know, they, they jumped on that bandwagon. You know, he just says, no, that's my guideline. That's my guardrail. And, and don't come down on me for that. But yet, politically... They did. You know, what if your wife came home and said, is there anybody here named Ronaldo? No? Okay, I just picked that name. I just want to have Ronaldo. And as Ronaldo puts in a card, why'd you pick on me today? What if she came home and said, oh, I'm going to go out for dinner with Ronaldo from the gym? You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be okay with that, right? So that's a, guide, a guardrail that you need to, to have those talks about before you find yourself in a situation that's, that's, that's maybe... It's going to hurt. It's going to leave a mark because you've gone past that. And it's really hard to turn back from that once you get there. But I would say do it. Talk about it. It's a dangerous thing. And people have contacts outside the marriage home. It's, too, we, we just, it's, it's going to happen. Like we're not, we, we can't just live in this little bubble as a couple in a relationship and not, not have those other environments that we're going to come in contact with other people. But what about when it's something? not somebody. Is that cheating? Is it like, can you cheat with your job, on your job? And I, let me explain, like, like many, as a pastor, I care deeply for people. And I get a lot of fulfillment from helping people. And it just feels good when you can sit down from somebody and go, man, what about this in your life? Or what about that? What if God did this? And you hear their stories and, and you get a perspective that they don't. It's very fulfilling. Sometimes you don't. But we still do our best to help. But what if, what if I'm putting aside my wife's needs and always at work, always helping? We've had those conversations, guys. We go, man, another night? You're going in? Who are you helping? Where are you going today? I don't ignore that because that's, that's an almost. It's almost like getting out of, out of a healthy environment for our relationship. And, and instead of me getting all angry, well, that's what I get to do, and I'm supposed to do that. I have these responsibilities. My first responsibility is to God, which is true. I still have a responsibility to God, but then my wife and my kids are next, right? So beyond him, and then, and then comes my job, which is really confusing sometimes because my job is 24-7. You know, it's 24-7. You don't, you don't stop being a pastor when you punch out. We try to get away and kind of forget about that kind of responsibility and just relax because there's a bit of pressure on you. You're not a celebrity, but there's expectations, and sometimes they're, they're more than you can handle. But my, my, job, my ministry is, is, is down there. It's good. It's important. But my wife is more important than that. So I, I have to watch because it's kind of like cheating because I'm getting something I should be receiving and giving in my own relationship. 
What about your favorite sport? This is a hurt some marks and guys, like these are guys getting elbows about golfing and things. There's a healthy, we've heard that in relationships. All of a sudden you go and get fulfilled from other areas in your life. It's kind of like you're, you're cheating with, with another environment. You're getting fulfillment from them. Nothing wrong with it, but can that wear on a relationship to the point where it's not healthy? Video games. Man, I, I can't tell you how many times we hear that. Video games. You know, I back in, I don't know, they do. People, it's like, all they do is game. Both ways. And it's not just guys. There's crafts and shoe shopping. <laughs> it's not, no, not a dig. Not a dig. <laughs> Fashion. Right? So you're, there's ways that, there's nothing wrong with those things, but that's, that's where's the almost? Where, where are you in a situation where you're almost in trouble? And that's what I want to try and address today. That's between you and your spouse. But it's definitely worth having those conversations before you're almost in too much trouble to turn back. There's a scripture in the Bible. Pastor Kelly put these out, right? And then all us campus pastors get to, to preach on it. So I'm twisting it around a little bit, obviously, because it's my take on it. That's the opening comments. But uh, <laughs> Proverbs 7 Verse 6 and 7. It's a story you've probably read before. It's from Solomon. Solomon's telling us this, right? So there's, there's some things in here I want you to see because you're going to think the obvious. And, and as a counselor, you don't, you don't always go to the obvious because there's usually things under the surface. There's usually things around the situations in every people's life that are more to it. Proverbs 6 and 7. Let's see if I can read off the back. I'm going to try the screens in the back. Man, I got all these high-tech stuff. I got old school papers up here. But at the window of my house, I looked down through the lattice, and I saw among the simple, I noticed among the young man, a young man who had no sense. So they look at it, and, and they look down at this guy, and he's like, okay, he's simple. I don't know how they can tell, but there's, there's more to that scripture. Verse 8 and 9 says, he was going down the street near her corner, walking along in the direction of her house at twilight. As the day was fading... And as the dark night set in. And if you notice here, they don't use actual names. You know, normally if they're identifying a situation, they'll use the name of who this person was and that person was. But it's fairly vague, meaning that it was probably quite common in those times. Right? In that situation. It's, a, it's an old profession that was probably pretty common in those times. But they were warning against that. But that's, that's something I don't want to just, I don't want to dwell on, the, on who this person was. Her corner, because the next scripture says, Proverbs 10 or 7, 10 to 12. It says, Then came out a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute, with crafty intent. She is unlikely, unruly, and defiant. Her feet never stay at home, now in the street. Now in the squares, at every corner, she lurks. So there's these situations. When I look at that, I go, and there's, there's situations, may not be prostitutes. But there's situations in all our relationships that are lurking. They're there. They're the almost. Like they're, they're an opportunity that you can get into trouble. And that's my point today. It's not you have to define those lines. But then you get to enjoy the repercussions of, of where those guardrails are. How far and how wide you're going to put them. But here he's saying, he says, it's lurks. It's there. It's, it's unknown yet so obvious, but to the people that are in it. Right? And that's the thing we find when often when we meet with people is that's the whole perspective of counseling is, is you get to sit across from somebody that, that sees the situation from their perspective and it, it, it was gradual. They ended up there after a certain period of time of the almost working both sides, almost didn't do this and, the, and the, the job and all those situations that take away from the intimacy of two people because that's what life does. But there, there are situations that can happen to anybody, and they're everywhere. Then Proverbs 7, 13 to 15 says, She took a hold of him and kissed him, and with a brazen face, she said, Today I fulfilled my vows. I have food for my fellowship offering at home. So I came out to meet you. I looked for you, and I found you. That's, that's something we find, too, is, is often when people get into that, that unhealthy state, and this is just wisdom, guys. They get into an unhealthy state, and the first thing I usually say is, there's going to be temptation around you. <laughs> if you have needs in your life that you're seeking help for, there's going to be temptation and situations lurking around you, and you won't even see it. 
because there's that need for you to be fulfilled, to feel like you're a provider, that you, you're still attractive and that you still can, can be who you are without being the criti criticized for it. But there's those opportunities out there, and if you're not careful and you don't have proper guardrails, you're going to find yourself in a situation. We see it time and time again. And yet the people don't see it. They're, they're just like, no, no, I know, I know what it is. That's the first thing is, is the naive young man. You, you maybe, maybe you've never experienced that yet. Maybe you're too, too young. And that's why I say in my marriage ceremonies, I go, man, if, you, if you, you're married today and, and marriages are awesome. I love doing marriages. I do a lot of weddings. I think I'm coming up to about 80 or 90 weddings this year. Not in this year, but in my career. <laughs> that's a lot of weddings. I should go to Vegas, do the Elvis thing. <laughs> Thank you. But where was I? Maybe something Cindy told me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Oh, well, yeah, when you're doing weddings, you always tell them, thanks you, thank you. That's the reminder. When you're doing weddings, I always say, you know, talk to somebody who's been married 10 years. Talk to someone who's married 15 years. Talk to someone who's married 20, 30, 40. If they're close to you, they'll probably be saying, I'm pretty sure that they went through that situation or came close to it in that situation. Not through their own choices, but through that guardrail that was, you never thought you needed until all of a sudden it's too late. And we hear of all the times. So is there ever really an accident? There's always a cause. And we've got to be so aware of those things. And that's what I see in this scripture. And then Proverbs, did I say 16, 17? No, I didn't. 17, 16, 18. Proverbs 16 to 18 says, I have covered my bed with colored linens from Egypt. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh, aloes and cinnamon. Come, let's drink deeply in love till morning. And let's enjoy ourselves with love. It, it's, that's not love. Love isn't, isn't just an amazing thing. And that's another thing we often see is people, they start... When it, when it starts to drift, they start putting effort into their own life, which is a good thing, but for the wrong reason. The reason should be back for their spouse again, but they're looking to find fulfillment. That's a symptom in your life. I'd say it, I've seen, I'm not calling everybody out on getting their life together and, and working on themselves, but it's usually, to, you're, in that sense, you're looking for that value. And, and if you have to do it yourself and gain that, that's a good thing. But make sure it's still for the reason of keeping you on that track with your relationship and not to start drawing attention from outside sources because that's, that's a, it's a real need but not the right place. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. And this next passage, I don't, we don't have it on, a, on the slide, but th this woman was married too and her husband was away. So how did that relationship get to a point where she's prostituting herself and they're still married? I don't know, that's a messy life. But if we think that all Bible characters... And back in that day, there are all these holy people. And when we get involved in messy lives, and we're so much better than them. And man, this world's been broken for a long time, is what I'm saying. Broken relationships have been around. So there's no shame. And if your relations didn't work, that's okay. Get yourself back on track with God first. Do what you can in your life to fulfill yourself with Him. Make yourself right with Him. And then you know what His love is going to say to you? Is sacrifice, forgive. Provide. Proverbs 7, 21 to 23. With persuasive words, she led him astray. She seduced him with her smooth talk. All at once, he followed her like an ox to slaughter, like deer stepping into a noose till an arrow pierces his liver, like a bird darting into a snare, like knowing it will cost them his life. And I, if you've talked to people that have been through divorce, man, it's painful. It's painful. And that's one of the most hurtful things. I've come from divorced parents. Caused a lot of pain, man, but I, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm just trying to say, if, that, if you've been through that, it's kind of like, it does, it costs a portion of your life. You, you, I don't know anybody says, no, the best thing never happened. Yeah, no, and yeah, you can look positive, but I'm still believing that there's, it's costing you something. And I don't think anybody would want to be in that situation. But when you look at that passage and all those scriptures, you go, there's something that he was trying to tell us. It, it seems so obvious. A prostitute, that's easy. But when it's not, when it's your work and your job and all these other things that are pulling you away from the intimacy of your marriage, they almost can be so uncertain, so unknowing, and you're caught up in that thing. And that's the, there's a Kairos moment where you got to go, number one, you talk to your spouse. Cindy and I have had a lot of tough conversations about being in situations where we weren't comfortable. 
and it doesn't get accusational, it gets, yeah, man, that's just, you know, we don't want to talk about that. We don't want to go near there or go here. And, and, and when we were first married, man, we were, we were like environments where it was just, and maybe people are doing that today. I don't know. We were just, every time we would go to the bar, there'd be different guys around and all. And then it was a terrible time. Thank God that we finally got, you know, started attending. And that was when we were at the labor club before this church was built. And we'd go to, out on the nights before and party and drink. And then the next day we'd be in this, hearing this word about this truth about what real love is and, and unconditional love and intimacy and like nothing like the world brings at all. That stuff is so, for such a short season, and you'll know that it brings, there's so much pain. It's just like, it's like this, it's costing you a portion of your life that's just not worth it. And if you're here for the first time, and maybe you've, maybe you're still there, I, I, it's okay, you can stay there, you can keep, continue doing that, but I think it's going to cost you something. You know, because I know, because I was there. Doesn't mean I'm perfect now, I mean, yeah, look at my opening comments. <laughs> right? But we're on that process of growing together. So here's some things I saw in all that. Number one, the first scripture there says no sense of where he was going by his emotions. He wasn't, he wasn't aware of his environments. He wasn't aware of the, the, where the guardrails should be. We're, we allow our situ, ourselves into situations, and we do this because we don't know. We just think it should be safe. Well, what could go wrong? What could it be? I'm just going for lunch, or I'm just having a conversation, or just, we just had this talk, and we just, man, we just connected. We allow ourselves into those situations where you can be this far away from being in a tough situation. All of a sudden, you make that connection that was never meant for you <laughs> because your spouse is at home. And then how do you turn back from that? How do you, Your pride usually comes over and says, oh, yeah, but you're not this, you're not that. But something in you says, oh, I still want to, I still, there's something there. I want to talk about it. What, what harm can it be? The what ifs. You're, you're not paying attention to them. And I hope you take it seriously. Right? And if you're in that situation and you've been in it or you're in it again, talk to somebody. And I'm going to share some tips on that later on. Number four, here's what I just talked about. Then we go beyond where we feel we can turn back. And we work on the areas in our own lives. Go, man, I can't turn back. Now I've got to work on my own life because we've, we've let our relationship deteriorate to a point where we're grasping at things. It's still not too late to turn back and to work on it. And then we put our lives into someone else who really doesn't deserve that refreshed you because <laughs> they haven't put in the work. And that's what happens. It's like you're, you're all together and then you got this new person. They're like, wow, you're fantastic. I can't believe he couldn't see that or she couldn't see that. Put, go, th go through what they did and then you'll see that. <laughs> you'll see the truth. There's more to what we see on our, our surface, how polished we are. There's more to our relationship than this really slick dressed guy with a great sense of humor although people don't tell me I do sometimes. But there's more, there's, there's more that Cindy goes through in our relationship than, than what I would appear to be to others. There's a lot of work, a lot of heartache, just like that song says. There's at times there's hate. It's like, man, I can't stand you. But I love you. It must be love because, man, it's just why would I even care, in other words, right? And that's the thing. If you've still got some care there, and if it's still hurting, there's something that could be healed. If there's violence, no, I don't know. I'd say stay away. Till you can you'd be in an environment where you can safely talk about it. But if you're already ex going into that level of, of tension or rage, you know, that, that's over the guardrail. Something, someone's going to get hurt, and you're going to get into a situation where there's going to be law enforcement, and then, then it's, again, you're, you, you already know you're going off the road if that's happening is what I'll say. Not too late to get help, but make sure you get help. You know, many people think that infidelity and, and cheating is, is a... Is, is, is physical. You know, like, oh, that's, it must be it because my heart's beating. And, no, it's not. It's, it's all based on emotions and lack of fulfillment in areas of your life. Just like the unexperienced man in Proverbs, he was allowed, with the lacking in his life, to, to reduce his guardrail for something that should have been so obvious. And that's how we can get tricked. We can, it can be so obvious, and it's like, and we see that as a couple that counsel, and that's, I, I say this all the time, too. That's why we stay sharp in our marriage. Honestly, in the last even 20 years of serving here is, is we sit across from people all the time that, that they have the same symptoms in their marriage that we do. Maybe way beyond. Maybe it's like a stage four cancer of relationships, if you know what I'm getting at. It's like it's so unhealthy, but, but yet we, those same symptoms slipped into our marriage. You know, pulled away and didn't talk when we should have and, 
And, and all, the way, all the things we do when we get angry or hurt is we fight or flight. And we do that for a while, but we, we go, no, we got to talk about that, man, because they're, they're stage two and stage three. And, and we went through our counseling course. Man, it was so amazing what Cindy put together. It, it, it shows this breakdown. And it's kind of like, oh, okay, this is, you know, this is where you are, man. You're not on the shoulder. You're in the ditch. And then you're in the guardrail. But there's, there's wisdom for things like that, guys. It's all in God's word. It doesn't mean you're not going to fail. Again, I'm not, this isn't a guilt thing about divorce. And then I talked about open relationships. I see people that go, well, you think it's like there's, there's a level of trust in an open, in that thing. And I'm not condoning it. Please don't put in cards about this. But when you think about it, it's like, wow, you can really, you can let that not affect you? Oh, yeah, but it does. That's not intimacy. That's going on feelings. It's got, it's got nothing to do with the depth of what a love relationship is. Nothing from God in that. That's not it. That's the world saying, Go for this. Go for that. Whatever makes you feel good, man. That's just, that's just not it. Uh, there's another, this is a bunny trail. We met, we met a guy in, in Banff, the Grizzly Steakhouse. I don't know if you've ever been there, but um, it, it's a, it, for lovers and hedonists, it says. And I didn't know what that meant. I just know they had good fondue. But <laughs> at every table there, there's a phone. And we thought, oh, cool. And then on the back of the menu, there's all the different tables that you can call. And it's like, we went there as pastors one time as a pastor. Hey, let's phone those guys up and, and you know, tell them, you know, shut up or whatever. But it was, for, it was for hooking up in the 70s. It was like Hugh Hefner used to go there. The guy, I met the guy that owned it. And he, I, he found out I was a preacher. And he's like, what? You're a preacher? Then I kind of messed him up. So he remembered me. Man, I'd go back there a year later. Hey, you're that rock. He called me rock and roll preacher guy. <laughs> but that was a culture. And uh, so people would, would go there and phone other tables and say, hey, it's open, man. It's just, it was, you look awesome. And Cindy and I went, it's a funny thing. We went there for 40 years. No one ever called us. So I was like, <laughs> not that it was disappointing, but I think it must have been me because I was like, well, I don't know. More inappropriate stuff there. Sorry, guys. <laughs> just the way my brain goes, like, <laughs> Cindy and I, no one ever called us. So one time there was a phone in the bathroom. <laughs> this is so good. This is only a couple of years ago. Was it this last year? And so I went into the bathroom and I phoned Cindy. She wouldn't answer. <laughs> I was like, because <laughs> we knew what the phones were for us and, and she knew I was away. She still wouldn't answer. I said, you didn't answer. She goes, I knew it was you. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> Anyways, I got I to really go through this quickly. These are a bunch of points I got here, guys. How do we establish guardrails? Okay, let's get back serious. <laughs> How do we establish guardrails to protect us? How do we, what are some typical health things to keep us on the road? There's going to be slides for this. Number one, love is, a dis oh, love is a decision, not an emotion. You can go by your emotions, and that's likely where you get into trouble because your emotions are going to tell you you have this need or that need. It's a decision. Number two, this is good. Your emotions will eventually catch up with your obedience. Right? Just be obedient. Do the right thing. And eventually, it might take a month, it might take a long time, but do the right thing because they'll eventually catch up to where you're obedient. Number three, don't make tomorrow's decisions based on today's emotions. You're going to go through those seasons, guys, and then, and, and we sit, again, we sit across from people and through our 40 years, this is just advice that you're going to go through those times, and you might think there's no hope. You might be in the deepest pit. I'm here to tell you, don't. Number four, this is a plug for parallel care. Counseling is worth it. it doesn't, I mean, we're booked. We, we just did a course training people to go. Just sit across from somebody, listen to their story, watch their actions. There's deeper, there's more going on. To it. Don't, not you don't trust people, but there's always something more. You can help people. It's worth it to talk to somebody. Don't go through your suffering alone. Whatever you are in your relationship, it's always, always, always worth it. Number five, have and live your own story, not someone else's. Don't look at Cindy and I and go, it's all perfect, man. You guys are, wow, 40 years, congratulations. Don't, don't compare. Man, you got your own life. You got your own situations. You got your own backgrounds. I don't know how insurmountable they were. If your marriage failed, I don't, I don't. That's not a judgment thing, so stop comparing what you think is successful and not successful. It's where you're at. Number six, 
here's another one unrelated. Social media is not a true reflection of what's going on. <laughs> we don't show Cindy picture of Cindy. Boy, she ticked off at me. Look at this. <laughs> you know, I, you, we're not going to post that. I have to prove most of the pictures. She goes, I don't like that one. I don't like that one. <laughs> I'll show this <laughs> angry face of you. Oh, I don't like that one either. Big surprise. Number seven, don't put pressure on your spouse. That's only meant for God to bear. They're not our end-all guys. Sure, they are. You know, they're our partner, but, but there's times and seasons where it's, it's not reasonable to put that on your spouse. That's why I go, what's your relationship with God like? Are you running to him? Man, do it. Number eight, you will find you will make progress when you see that you're the problem. <laughs> obvious man just look at yourself first and then just do it you're going to feel better for yourself than being becoming somebody you don't even like yourself right just 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 work on yourself so much and talk to somebody else that you trust about how you're doing not about how rotten your spouse is we're at number nine remember that you will when you leave you take all your problems with you <laughs> right you're going to take, you're still you, and often people do. They go and they get fixed up, and then they, they move on. But it's, it's kind of like, do that when you're in the relationship, or go back to it and give it your all, you know, and, and work on that. Number 10, go on date nights. We just went away for anniversary. We, we man, you don't think I've been ever not busy? Don't have that commitment? I was just talking to another couple before, and we've committed to go on date nights and, and vacations and taking that time together to work on two things that we're supposed to do. I can't remember what they are. <laughs> you know, but do that, man. Do it. Don't think you're not going to. This is just practical stuff. Don't make the kids the center of your family. That's another one. Even if you're remarried. And my mom and my stepdad were remarried and, and I knew there was conflict because I was a motocross racing long-haired guy that didn't smoke tobacco, but smoked other things. And my stepbrother was an all-star athlete, you know, just a nice, drove a Maverick. I drove like, he had a four-door Maverick. I drove like a Chevelle with small block and tires and totally different. But I knew there was a conflict there. But I, one thing I watched my, my stepdad and my mom was that they had a commitment together. And I, I was respectful of him for that. He loved her. And that was what was important to me as a kid. You know, I wanted to see that. She deserved it. Hmm, choked up. Balling pastor. I, um, so don't make your kids a center. They're going to move out, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> right? Do getaways and vacations. I already talked about that. 13, look at your marriage as how healthy it is rather when it's fixed or broken. There's always hope, man. We've seen cancer disappear. We've seen families reunited. There's always hope. Listen to that song. Uh, 14, Always work towards more intimacy in your relationship. It's a lifelong experience. Always work on intimacy. How often? Almost every day. <laughs> Today's takeaway, I'll let you guys go pretty quick here. To avoid a relation slip, I must have a personal set of behaviors that will become a matter of con conscience. It's you. Those are your choices, guys. As a church, as a pastor, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying, where do you feel safe where do you feel I'm going to get into trouble? You know, and, and, you, and you watch that situation with, with your heart. Be open about it because it's going to hurt because it's sensitive. That's why you ended up there in the first place. There's emotions involved. There's needs that aren't met. There's situations that brought that, that haven't been healed. And, and some of them are from your present relationship. Some of them are from your upbringing. That's why I say get help with somebody. And it doesn't just go away just because you talk to somebody one time. It's reoccurring. Man, I'm a pretty insecure guy, honestly. I have to, that's one thing I have to watch, man, because I, I can feel nervous when, I, when I'm not in a safe environment, and, and I can be edgy, and I can pull back. I can, unhealthy things, man. I see that about myself, and there's, there's, you're not perfect either. But look at it. Cool. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for everyone listening today. God, regardless of their background, Lord, or their success or failures as they see them, God, I thank you, God, that you see, this. you see us differently, Lord. And for every situation that we hurt, God, I just pray that you would heal us. Heal people right now as I speak, God, online watching, Father. Heal us, change us, make us whole, that we would grow to be more like you, that we'd be able to love you and love others, and even those who are closest to us who sometimes bring us the greatest pain. 
I thank you that your name is above that. And as we seek you and seek wisdom and counsel, God, you'll heal those areas. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Paul says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that he rose again from the dead, you will be saved. So I want to run through a prayer with you right now that does exactly that. And it's not joining the church. It's not joining religion. Uh, it's simply just a relationship with God. So uh, if you'd like, you can close your eyes, bow your head, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I confess that you are God. And I believe that you rose again from the dead. And I ask you now to become my Lord, to become my Savior, to become my friend. I thank you that my past is past and that I can begin anew with you today. My heart is yours. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So guys, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, there's going to be a link posted in the Facebook comments there. You can click on that link, fill out that form, uh, and we just love to be a part of your journey, help you out, uh, and yeah, just kind of get you started. Uh, have any questions you might ask, we'd love to just be in contact uh, and help you out with that. But what an amazing end to our series, Relation Slips. We hope you guys enjoyed it. We loved having Pastor Ralph on. It was an amazing time having Pastor Ralph back. He mentioned uh, this morning, it's been two years since he's actually been on. Uh, and so it's very, very exciting to have him back uh, on uh, preaching. Always funny, always just a fun time uh, to have Pastor Ralph on. But one, uh, a couple of verses I wanted to speak with you guys uh, through today was in Proverbs 11.24. Uh, which says one person gives freely yet gains even more another withholds unduly but comes to poverty and then in proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10 it says honor the lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your crops then your barns will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine so in both of these verses it's, it's promised that if you give then you'll get back right uh, but not just giving but giving of your first and your best Right? So when you give your best, you will receive the best blessing. So think of uh, the ways that you've given in the past, through your energy, your time, your finances, your praise. Uh, have you given the best or are you just giving your leftovers? Right. Sometimes we go to the point where we we give what we uh, we 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 use what we can on ourselves or on, uh, on yeah on ourselves, and then whatever's left, then we give that away. Right. Uh, but God wants to bless it bless you when you give the first right so before you even think about yourself you give of your time your finances of your praise just of that give the first of that and and then live off of what you got left and that uh, is where God will bless you even more because that is a, a greater sacrifice than giving what you have left right and so uh, God blesses this kind of giving because when you give with the focus of on giving uh, and give with the intention of blessing others then God blesses you right so when you're giving of your first fruits or of your best you are literally thinking about giving before anything else and God just wants to bless that immensely so the hard thing is is that it's harder to give this way right it's harder to give of your first than it is of what you have remaining it's easier to hold on to money and other things and give what's left because you know that you already have or that you've already been taken care of uh, and so now you can give of what's left right so it's it's an amazing kind of uh, flip around and it's it's definitely hard i don't i uh, don't don't get me wrong it's definitely hard to give first before you uh, think of yourself but what happens when you begin giving before you think about yourself then you get the energy uh, and you spend it on someone else when you get time spend it on someone else first before you get praised spend your praise on someone else so I think it's clear throughout these verses that when you give thinking of others first before you think of yourself or thinking of uh, holding on uh, to your money or saving or something like that when you give when you give you get more in return and so I want to encourage you guys today and for this week, give of your first fruits. And that's just your time, your finances. That's just your praise uh, and just anything, your energy. Well, I want you throughout this week to, to find others to give your first to uh, and then live off of what you got left. So uh, in the comment section, there's going to be a give link that you can click on if uh, you feel it in today, uh, feel it in you today to give 
uh, to the church. But I want to encourage you that giving doesn't just happen on Sundays. It doesn't just happen uh, with the church. Giving is a throughout the week kind of thing. I want to encourage you guys that it doesn't end on Sundays. Throughout the week, let's give of our time. Let's give of our energy. Let's just give to others. Give of your first uh, and watch how God blesses you in that. And so, again, there's a link in the comment section. You can click on that link uh, that will uh, allow you to give securely to the church. And when you're giving, uh, goes to the church. It actually benefits amazing organizations like Not For Sale uh, and My City Care and helps those who are unable to help themselves, those who are struggling, those who are trapped. Uh, and so I would encourage you to give there as well. Uh, but yeah, guys, let's start giving of our first, not of our last, not what's remaining. Uh, let's give our best before we give uh, of our last. So let's pray, guys. Dear God, I thank you so much for those that are giving today and those that aren't. I pray just immense blessings on each and every one that's watching uh, today with us. And I pray uh, just just give back to them what they give today, pressed down, shaking together, running over, and just, uh, just blow their minds with the amazing, amazing blessings that you have in store for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. So starting next week, Pastor Kelly is going to be going through Vision Sunday. So I would highly encourage you guys to attend next week. It's going to be an amazing service. We're just going to uh, go through just what what the vision is for the whole church. And it's just going to be an amazing uh, and clarifying time uh, for everybody. So, it's, And it's going to be a, a one-off. And then we're jumping right into another series next time. So I would encourage you guys, I would love to see you all next week. Invite someone out and let's, uh, let's blow this out of the water. So uh, besides that, guys, thank you so much for joining in. We hope you have an amazing, amazing rest of your day, a rest of your week. Uh, and we'll see you during the week or next Sunday. Have a good one.